We've got a Ford Focus 2013. It's uh, not moving forward intermittently. It's setting code P0805, clutch actuator A, or clutch position sensor A. Um, and uh, due to the A clutch application issue, it's also going to be miss. It's going to be missing gears one, three, and five. Okay, something's acting up. All right, I'm in drive, first gear. Watch this. It's kind of hesitating a lot. I do detect a burnt clutch odor as well. And I also noticed the traction control light come on as well. So I'm going to rescan it in a minute. And one more time. See if it does anything different. bucking and jerking a lot. At one point it completely lost engagement and was revving really high. Surprised it's not doing it this time. Let's get it in the shop and diagnose it. All right, no new codes. That traction control light was a, appears to be a different issue. Okay, since the issue points towards an actuator issue, I'm gonna go ahead and take actuator A right there and swap it with the lower actuator and see if the issue transfers to clutch B. Uh, if, I'll show some of that, but if you're unsure how to replace or remove an actuator, I have a video on uh, clutch actuator replacement. Okay. That's not right. little uh, backstory here it's already had two actuators put on and another shop before us did some repairs to the wiring harness but I'm just gonna diagnose it and uh, see what's going on here this is the upper actuator the one that's setting a code and uh, put this on the bottom and see if the issue transfers to clutch B come on All right, need both hands. All right, here's actuator B on the bottom. Stick that in my pocket. Damn it. I hope I'm not supposed to cuss on these videos. <laughs> Time to install the lower actuator on the top position. Okay, get your air box back in. It's easier with two, it's easier with two hands. <laughs> okay. Good. This is just a temporary installation. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to clear all the codes out and drive it again. See if the issue transfers from clutch A position sensor circuit to clutch B. And if it does, the only thing we moved was the actuators. Therefore, it would be an actuator issue. Okay, the codes are cleared. I'm out of the shop with a foggy looking camera. There we go. And, um,. I'm going to see if, if I can get it to act up again. I'll take you for a, a quick spin real quick. Nothing. Nothing.
nothing yet. <laughs> Take a right up here. And it's been pretty regularly acting up right around this turn here, so. Okay, I'm all clear. Seems to be behaving normally at the moment. Okay, it's uh, been five minutes and it's still acting just fine. You see, this is the joy of being a technician, trying to figure something out, and, um, and the issue just hides away for a while. I'll take you for uh, another spin here. onto the highway starting at a low rate of speed and then accelerate hard just to try to agitate any intermittent issue here nothing uh, still nothing uh, the trick here with this type of issue if you want to replicate it would be to do more stop and go driving to instigate more shifts to apply and release the uh, actuators obviously so um, I'm gonna switch to stop and go type of driving here nothing uh, it's been about another five or ten miles still nothing no pending codes for the transmission. I'm clear behind me. No cars behind me, I mean. All right, so... I mean, I do apologize ahead of time. It appears there won't be much hands-on diagnosing on this vehicle, and that's the way it is a lot of times, actually, on these. Like, you'll... With these um, actuator-related codes, you can... Uh, you can go a couple hundred miles before it'll act up again. And uh, that's definitely not unheard of. So, um, in this situation, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, there's some loose gravel back there. I'm going to let a porter drive the car more. Put, we're going to get some more miles on it. And, uh, if the uh, check engine light comes back on and the transmission acts up again, I will look at the code. And uh, if it switches to an actuator B code from the actuator A code that it came in with, then I'll know it's an actuator issue because I swapped A and B. If it stays as an A um, actuator code, the same code that it came in with, then I'll know the actuator is okay, and at that point I'll order a TCM. Another thing you can do before you uh, replace a TCM, I've never seen a wiring problem on a Focus, but um, if you give me a minute I will show you the wiring diagram. If you would like to check powers and grounds and load test circuits. Okay, I have good news. The issue started acting up again and it still feels like clutch A. See the hesitation? It's starting out in second gear, which what it's doing is bypassing first gear, which is controlled by clutch A. Okay, here's the codes that are in here now. Stuck in gear three, which is clutch A shift fork A position circuit. They are different codes, but they are still related to clutch A. Therefore, this car is under warranty for the, a TCM. I'm just going to go ahead and order a TCM because that would be the next step. And I've done the diagnosis for that. Uh, let's 
let's see if you want to watch the or see the uh, wiring for the transmission let me show you that that's not correct okay here's the wiring diagram for the clutch actuators I don't have much more time left to record uh, but um, clutch motor one is an 8 pin connector You should have, uh, on pin 1, you should have 5 volts. Uh, pins 2 through 4 appear to be a sensor circuit, so you won't be checking those. Pin 5 should be uh, have continuity to ground. And um, here's the other information here. And here's the diagram for uh, control module going to the clutch motor one if you want to check for continuity between those wires there's the color of them and honestly the transmission harness is uh, easy to replace if you suspect an issue there and you can't find it just replace it I hope this helps please subscribe for more thank you for watching